Hello, uh, welcome to this video on my Ethereal Hackathon entry. My entry is called Crowdsource or Gamified Citizen Toll Enforcement. It's a set of simulator applications that demonstrate Microsoft Azure serverless connected to the Ethereum network and leveraging the Ledger's JS from overhide for dollars and ethers payments. Uh, the application is about a city that wants to collect tolls in zones within a city and to leverage the citizens themselves for collecting the tolls. So this is the simulation application. Here's our citizen. And it's not so much that the citizen enforces toll payments as much as the citizen helps to find violators of toll payments and gets rewarded for finding such violators. There are several widgets in this simulation. There is the car top-up app, which is used by the car or the driver itself in order to top up toll payments. Uh, this portion shows uh, how much time is remaining for the car to remain in zone A, B or C. This is where the driver gets to top up with either dollars or ethers. There are different price fee schedules depending on which, which currency the driver chooses. The city map itself uh, clicking on the buildings, if I click on the school in zone C, the car simply drives there. Uh, I'm not paid up right now, but that's okay because there's no citizen looking f uh, or checking my car. Uh, the library in zone B or the city hall in zone A, or I go back to the suburbs. The, when I'm inside of the city, the citizen can, by clicking on the citizen, I can follow where the car is. It's a pretty basic UI. And then once I'm on top of the car, the citizen can use the citizen app to check and report on the car. The enforcement app is not very interactive. It mostly shows state of the vehicle, the enforcement vehicle being here, uh, some logs and some maintenance uh, to clean up uh, cars or reports that are that are stale and you can click on the little blue icons to sort of read about what each of the widgets does and they're available on all the all the apps the enforcement app talks to the azure serverless which connects to the ethereum network for retrieving the events the toll bounty app on the other hand is decentralized through through just connecting straight to the ring test network and as such, the, the citizens roaming the city, they do not connect to a centralized server. They are onboarded onto Ethereum. They are aware of the rewards that they will get by participating. And they are also aware of the fact that they, whenever they report a car, they're staking some ethers. And that is to prevent uh, griefing the system. So let's just do that right now. We have the citizen on top of the car. We know the car has not paid up since uh, it's not paid up in zone B, which is the yellow zone, needs to top up. So if I click right here, check and report, that's basically this, the citizen reporting or checking the car. The citizen at this point doesn't know whether the car is violating being in the toll zone or not, but the, the network does, the contract itself does, because the contract knows that the, the driver has not paid up the toll. The messages at the top here they show uh, what's going on especially when we deal when we're dealing with the car top up app but as well we also see the the messages in the logs for these two apps so we see that the transaction went through with my wallet connected to ringby and the car was successfully reported and as you saw the enforcement officer just came after the car and now the enforcement officer is using um, the serverless azure network and checking if if uh, the ticket can be issued and there we have a car is ticketed so at this point uh, the citizen has gotten his reward it's it's in the smart contract and they can collect on it there are events that are logged so we'll get our driver back home we don't have to be back home but let's 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 be a good good driver and let's pay up for we're going to uh, the hospital first and we can choose dollars uh, three dollars or ethers 0 0.0193 ethers to go into zone b 
Um, so let's choose dollars real quick. And this is using Overheights Ledger's JS. Uh, here you can just put a fake email. This is on the test network with Stripe. And uh, this is using Ledger's based authorization. Before we go into that, uh, when it asks for an SMS verification, just click back because this is a test network. The card number is 4242, That's pretty basic. Put in some data in the future, 0222, CVC, any number, 222, pay $3. And that went through uh, with dollars, but now, as you can see, we are calling into the contract, the, the Ethereum contract, and what the Azure serverless does is it checks with Overhide's remuneration API, which is ledger-based, meaning that the payment is not actually checked against Stripe, it's checked against the Overhide ledger, which is a dollars ledger, to, to um, work in a very similar fashion to what an Ethereum payment would look like. To re really quickly show that, I'll just go into uh, Azure, and here are some serverless logic apps and this is this toll enforced top up is the one that's that's responsible for checking top ups and i'll just quickly show you what just happened uh the flow is very similar whether the payment is made in dollars or ethers um, the http payment comes in goes through a bunch of variable setting and there are two conditions uh, one is for dollars and one is for ethers and all they do is basically set the URL for the remuneration API to check a ledger. So all it does is just sets a, a bunch of variables from this this configuration form, Microsoft form that's that's up here. But the actual payment check, uh, so this is the validation of the car. So regardless of whether the payment was in dollars or ethers, we check that the car's Ethereum address is signed. And the car's Ethereum address is used in both instances. And a, a ledger check of whether the, there is an actual payment uh, is done with a simple HTTP GET against uh, one of the ledgers that's uh, abstracted by Overhide. Getting back into the application, uh, we are paid up. And so let's drive to the hospital. And if the citizen comes after the car right now, um, they're staking their 0 0.0001 ethers and that goes through straight to the contract that doesn't go through Azure uh, only these two apps go through Azure the, the top up and the enforcement up which which makes sense since the the centralization part for the city itself makes sense okay so the payment I mean the car report went through so unfortunately, uh, the car timed out and <laughs> got caught for non-payment. So let's just try this again real quick. Uh, that's because we went to the Azure and we were looking at that while uh, the driver's timer was running. So let's just let's try to go to City Hall. So let's pay up now with Ethers. So this is the driver paying up with Ethers. And so this is the driver's fee. Now this is going through Ledger's JS library uh, in order to abstract the Web3 wallet for the car top up app, which as soon as that goes through, it's uh, then then the car top up app will talk to Azure to put the car's payment uh, timing information onto into the contract. So at this point, we see that the message should change, and now we're talking to Azure. And now we're paid up for two minutes in this simulation. So if we go to the city hall and the citizen goes there and checks us, uh, once again the citizen is going to stake some money. But the stake, the staked ether is always returned when uh, the car is successfully ticketed. If the car is not successfully ticketed, then the ethers, uh, the the stake is taken away, which means that there is some risk that the citizen is taking in the, in the sense that the car might leave before the officer arrives and so so that means the the system really works for cars that are static in inside of the city some are parked or, or stationary for at least a couple minutes for the officer to get there and there is a timeout on uh, the actual report from the citizen 
so that so that if the officer doesn't get there within a couple minutes I believe it's 30 seconds in the simulation then the staked ethers are returned and um, there's nothing nothing left for the uh, for the citizen to to risk and they just move on to the next car and check it okay so here we have a case where the citizen bounty hunter reported the car but the car is validly paid up so the report says it's denied this is no problem it's because the car is paid up the citizen bounty hunter simply goes after another car it literally takes a couple seconds to check another car the cartel payment has expired now so the citizen bounty hunter when they check the car the report's going to go through successfully but what we will do is before the enforcement officer gets to the car we're going to drive the car away to the city hall this shows that the citizen takes some risk by um, staking a little bit of ether to to prevent griefing by the citizens to ensure that uh, the reports are for fairly static cars as this this citizen bounty hunting is meant for static traffic within the city uh, dynamic traffic is still checked in a similar fashion but probably through funneled toll booths by bridges and tunnels or, or places where traffic dynamic traffic um, is funneled through so we're just waiting for the enforcement vehicle to respond we could move away the car right now the enforcement vehicle in this simulation is still going to respond to where the bounty hunter reported it and uh, that report is going to fail so there goes the enforcement officer and here we have the dispatch to the contract saying the car was not found garnish the citizens bounty uh, i mean uh, staking because there is no ticket to be issued and there is the the log statement saying incorrect report stake garnished so some things to mention is uh, that the system is pretty cheap for a city to implement the car need only to have uh, pretty much a QR code on the windshield with the Ethereum address and the license plate the citizen bounty hunters they just have an app uh, to run around the city and check cars and uh, enforcement there's there's uh, it's pretty automated so there's very little liability uh, everything is in the smart contract if there is no event from Ethereum uh, about a, a report or a ticket and there is no basis for a ticket well that's about the gist of the simulation um, there is more information in the readme of the github repo about the background the motivation and why I, I believe this is a real world use case that could be solved with the Ethereum blockchain with a centralized Azure serverless or centralized component and a decentralized Ethereum contract with the citizen bounty hunters. Uh, the two actually work pretty nice in this system. Um, also keep in mind that uh, this is using the RingB testnet. So at times the RingB testnet gets a little bit slow and, and too too sluggish for the timeouts in the simulation itself which are two minutes for the toll to expire and, and 30 seconds for a report well that's about it thanks for watching take care